Hi everyone, so um, today I'm going to talk about something I've already talked about but I kind of want to do an update video, um, sort of a better video on the topic, so vi um, videos of fish and stuff, so it's more I guess interesting So and it's kind of very important if you want to get into Pleca. So this is understanding the L number system and you might have noticed people using numbers to refer to Pleco or Hypostome, but it also can, I believe, even um, other members of Laurel Cardate can be referred to using the L number system. So the L number system is a method of categorizing Laurel Cardate. Um, as I said, the majority own the subfamily Hypostome. This includes genus such as Hypostomus, Hypancistus, Panic. Pseudocanthicus and Cistrus, etc. Not all species in this have an L number or an LDA number, which is a similar system. It does overlap as well. So the system was created by Dats magazine, which is a German fishkeeping magazine, in order to classify large numbers of Laurel Cardo being discovered over the last few decades. Um, so First species to be assigned a scientific name, which is also known as a Latin name, such as Laticara dorsagira for the red-breasted acara, that was a sickly, but it just popped into my head. But you also get Ancistrus cirrhosis um, as a pleco example. Um, my mind's had a um, totally blank out of floor card. It was, ah, Cistrus ranunculus, for example. So you have the genus name the first word which is always capitalised on the first letter and the species name which is all lowercase. So for a species to be assigned a scientific name it requires generally a taxonomist or a scientist because generally it has to be published in a scientific paper and that is requires quite a lot of training to do so or a lot of work. So the process takes a lot of time and it requires morphometric measurements, comparative studies between similar species, even molecular studies, um, you, the use of a CT scanner or all sorts. It's expensive, it is long, it requires a lot of research and understanding of the genus and the species itself. Afterwards the paper actually has to be peer reviewed and then accepted into a journal which generally is quite difficult to do, especially if you're not a scientist at all. So the L number system is in order of time of discovery, which does provide big issues, I feel, with it. So other issues are the same species can have multiple L numbers. This can refer to locality or different colour variations. I'm not sure if they're thinking they're separate species or separate varieties. So, for example, the gold nugget, Baron Cistrus xanthellus, has three, three L numbers associated with the um, three L numbers associated with that species. There is also an LDA number which I cannot remember. I'm afraid, uh, but the three L numbers are L one seven seven, L eighteen, and L eighty five. These are the main um, L numbers associated with this species. The L85 is a um, oh god. Um, L85 is the adult, the mature specimen of L18. There is also a L81, which is known can be known as Balancistrus CF and Xanthellus because it wasn't included in the original description so it's unsure whether they think it's a different species or whether they don't and if you watch my video on the Baron Sister Xanthellus I'll explain it better um, they do have a different locality Baron Sister CF Xanthellus the L81 is known for being more difficult to keep more difficult to get feeding it was staying up for like over a week so I'm not sure what it's doing now <laughs> Anyway, so there are more issues and another issue is that um, different species can have the same L number such as um, Baroncistrus dermatoides um, and um, Hemiencistrus subiverdus are referred to as L200. 
The issue is these are two completely different species. They are diagnosed by Baron Cistrus dermatoides, has the, a membrane between the dorsal fin, which is that top big fin, and the adipose fin, which is the tiny one. Whereas Hemiancistrus subiverdus doesn't have this. Sometimes you'll see um, the dermatoides or Baroncistrus dermatoides referred to as the L200A, but I don't believe that is actually the true name almost. So, other issues. Um, firstly, it doesn't give any idea of phylogenetics or information about the fish other than time of discovery. So scientific names will list the genus and you can kind of track scientific names to understand the phylogeny and evolution of a species and understand more about the species um, and also describe the fish in some way. Scientific names are universal but then not all L numbers are given a scientific name. They might or they might not have been described under a scientific name as of yet um, which is difficult and also finding diagnostic features between L numbers it doesn't seem to be a thing like other than so you don't have a scientific paper listing the features you have websites which is a bit less reliable so I'm not really keen on L numbers anyway um, I mean I like Laurel Cardet I'm not keen on the L number system so generally scientific names are better to use they're universal so everyone in the world uses up everyone no matter where you live should have the same scientific name there may be synonyms but they are not the same and they are sort of like out of date there is also as i said the lda number system and this does overlap with the l number system as well and it also overlaps with itself Corridors also have a similar system which you might have seen. So Corridors are given C numbers and this is also done by DATS magazine. Um, and there are studies also showing that a lot of C numbers are probably the same species. There's also the CW system which is used by Cori well made by Corridors World by I Ian Fuller. So this is also another way of listing or numbering Corydorus. And I believe there is some slight overlap. Anyway, so that's kind of like a sort of quick explanation of um, L numbers, how they work. Um, they are difficult. You don't have to learn them. They're useful if you want to list different varieties but don't I don't think anyone should be expected to learn them I think scientific names are a whole lot more useful I've never used um, L numbers in science really we always use scientific names and if it's not described it's used SP which is means species singular so a bit of like writing sort of thing when you're writing down scientific name, um, L numbers, if it has been described and as a scientific name, list the scientific name, then in speech marks, brackets, put the L number. In under the nomenclature sort of rules for scientific names for animals and I think it is just animals, varieties and cultivars are not registered and they're not as legitimate so it's not really like the right way to do it you shouldn't even be listing their number almost at all but you get what I mean if it is undescribed but it has a nail number it I find it easy if you put the genus SP meaning species and then put in brackets or speech marks just put the L number so that will explain sort of what um, you're referring to and it can help with varieties or different localities and stuff like that same as if you said um, uh, there is the ancestress SP Rio uh, Ucali which you put the Rio Ucali in speech marks anyway so thank you for watching um, I'm trying to make as many videos as I can it's difficult because I've got uni and stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching.